So in the introduction video, we were showing you the basic gameplay. This is a different map, so I've chosen to open uh, Munich, which is an enormous map. If you uh, even if you zoom out all the way, <laughs> you see it's absolutely enormous, which will be quite fun. But the good news is all maps start in the same way, which is with a small piece of connected track. And the four trains they've given me by default basically go from uh, Richtung Weilheim down to Richtung Mering via Geltendorf. Uh, although this is connected down here, there aren't any trains at the moment that go down here. So it kind of makes the, the layout quite easy. The next train is shown down the bottom here. So upcoming trains. See the next one is 1032. If you click on it, it will show you that it's going from here down to Gildendorf, um, platform five, and then back to the same station. So there's one train that does this, one train that does this, one that goes all the way through in that direction, and one that goes all the way through in that direction. So that's basically um, what you start with. At the moment, I don't have any of the upgrades enabled, but I have earned 10 green points. So I'm just gonna look at some of the first things that you want to unlock. Uh, and I kind of mentioned this before, although at the moment you um, you can't do it with the trains that we've got. But one of the problems is that if you, let's say, set a route from here into here, it will still let you set a route onto the wrong side of a set of points. And that's kind of a little bit like the very, very early signaling systems, which didn't have any what we call interlocking. So it would allow you to do that. And if, if you do that on rail route, you can actually lose the game by crashing a train or, um, you know, or a number of other things. However, if you do finish the game, it will allow you to continue from your last save. So you can kind of go back a step. Um, I'm not sure how often it saves, but yeah, you can go back to a previous save. So one of the first things that we can uh, pay for, which is only one XP, is signaling safety. And literally what that will do is it will stop what I just showed you. So if I do this and I try and do it now, you can see it comes up with a little message, an animated message saying that you can't do that because that path that you're trying to cross is occupied. So that's one of the most simple, sort of cheapest ones um, that we can use. And that's the first upgrade. And that's all it does. It works across all different signal types and um, all different sorts of junctions and everything else. It's just a nice one one-off sort of cheap hit. The other thing that I, I don't find quite as useful, but again, it's only one XP, which is they call the root preview. And that just means if you hover over a signal, it will show you which route is currently um, switched with the point. So if I switch that and hover now, you can see the yellow line goes down towards uh, Richtung Kalfering. Um, whereas if I switch it that way, it goes to Richtung Mering Station instead. So again, pretty kind of basic, and um, but I guess kind of useful. So there's uh, a couple of the free ones. Now, again, I mentioned this on the introduction that there are two things really that are annoying when you first start the game. One of them is that the fact that you have to accept a train for it to come onto the map and it's kind of doable at this speed and at this let's speed up a little bit uh, and at this size, but there's no way that you're going to be able to do that um, when you're on a larger map with lots more trains. So again, it's very simple, the concept of auto accept. It's only three points, three XP. So adding that one, upgrading that quite literally means that the next time a train appears, at one of, they're called sync stations, I learned. So the ones that have this little tiny arrow at the end of the platform, that means it goes off the map. And so you can't build anything on this side of the station, or not from this, this track anyway. So these sync stations, when a train arrives, you get that little round all that you normally have to click. So because I've now um, upgraded and got auto accept trains, then I don't need to do that anymore. The other thing that's annoying, and this demonstrates it particularly, is this train is actually going from here down to here and back again. So it needs to reverse at Geltendorf. And unfortunately, by default, it won't do that automatically. I need to pay for the auto reverse trains upgrade. The way you do it when you first start, before you've got enough um, XP to pay for it, is 
you basically right click the train you can do it at any point before it stops and when it stops it will then reverse now obviously be careful with that because if there are signals and you click reverse back here and it stops at a signal then it will immediately reverse which is not what you're going to want to do so just bear that in mind but again it's a bit of an annoyance to have to do that and um in that there is kind of a bug i don't know if they fixed it yet where if you kind of go to here and sort of build off the other end it doesn't reverse properly or, or something like that so um yeah the auto reverse is super super helpful anyway certainly in the earlier stages of the game what happens later on is you will start using departure sensors on these platforms and the departure sensor will kind of do the job of the auto reverse it will unlock a signal at the correct end of the station depending on where this is going to but yeah we don't want to auto reverse manually because that's annoying so we will also choose auto reverse trains and we will apply that so now we've got kind of most of the really basic stuff that we need before we start looking at automation so what that's going to allow me to do is i can now run these trains much more quickly because that little warning that comes up to accept a train, I think it only lasts about 30 seconds and then it kind of starts erroring and starts making a horrible noise. So it's just another thing that you're kind of rushing around trying to click. So it's just going to make things a lot easier. I can probably run at 10 times without too many problems. You can see here the next train is going from here up to there and back again. So all I now need to do at the moment is just to set these signals to green. That train's coming automatically and when it gets through to Geltendorf it will also reverse automatically and I still need to set the signal to go back the other way but you know little stages oh, it should have oh that's interesting it should have reversed but it didn't oh I think that might be the bug actually I think if you can have auto reverse trains but it only works on the stations that are dead end if you have a track on the other end the auto reverse doesn't work which again i'm not sure if that's it seems like it's a bug but i'm not sure whether that's deliberate um, or not so anyway we've kind of got two green points some of them that i won't be talking about are things like more stations so when you go to the map and you want to buy more stations funnily enough you want to buy these after a while it will basically tell you you can't buy any more and it will automatically take you to this and say you need to click more stations and you can see here um, it allows expanding and buying up to seven operated stations so you can open up a, a bit more of your map um, if you do even more stations it will let you get up to 12 and then eventually you can unlock the unlimited stations which obviously allows you to buy every station on the map so that's that's all it does again you'll need to do that at some point in order to expand your network um custom contracts allow you to literally set up your own train contracts we haven't really talked about contracts yet but you know this is um let's go out of this these contracts here to say oh i've got a train do you want to have this one it goes from richtung valheim down to Geltendorf and back again and you get to choose whether you want that for the money they're offering so they're contracts but usually most of the contracts you interact with are generated by the system and you get to choose whether you like it or not with custom contracts you can create your own and i'll show you that um, in a, a much later video because it's not something we do very often um but yeah what i'll look at next is i'll run up a few more xp in the green and then we'll start using the really important parts automatic routing perpetual circuits sometimes maybe a bit later on and uh, the relay sensor so they're your three basic automations i now have 13 green xp to spend and i bought another platform at geltendorf here platform four now the reason why that's quite useful to us is there are i've bought a, um, a new contract which basically goes just like this one basically um weilheim down to geltendorf and back again but remember I mentioned a little while ago that if you have tracks going out both ends of a platform like this, the auto reverse doesn't work. It will carry on going in that direction and then it will stop at a signal. So that's kind of annoying, whereas this dead end platform here, because we haven't got a track at the bottom, 
the auto reverse will work correctly. However, the existing contract is supposed to be going to platform five. So it's kind of tough luck and you have to do it manually. Now, why don't we just change this to go into platform four instead? Well, the answer is until you unlock the upgrade, it won't let you do it. So I'll show you what that means. It slows down a little bit. If I pick the train and hit the timetable button, if I want to change this, you'll see it say you can't do it because you need platform adjustments as an upgrade. So that again, tier one green, it's only three. So we'll do that, we'll install the upgrade. We'll go out of that. And now these platform buttons have, have highlighted. Now this station, this station only have one platform anyway, so there's nothing to change. I mean, you can press the any button, but it doesn't really make any sense here. But here, what it means now is I can say right in the future, go into platform four instead of platform five. If this train was heading towards Geltendorf and you changed that early enough, then it would apply to the live train. But since we've already left this station, it will only apply to the next ones. And when you make any changes, including timings or platforms, it will show you here the effect on the money by doing the change. Now, changing a platform doesn't ever affect the money. But if you, let's say, wanted it to stay longer at a particular station, you're adjusting these, you might find that you'll start losing money. Or conversely, if you speed up the tracks and you can get from here to here in less time, and you tweak the timetable, you'll get more money up to a maximum. Now, this is already the maximum 5,000, so you're not going to be able to get any more for that. But on some of the faster trains, as you start adding them into cities and uh, regional trains, at the moment, this track is very slow. The, the intercity wants to go at 200 kilometers an hour, so it's going to offer you very low amounts of money. But as you speed up the track, you adjust the timetable to compensate for that and you start getting more and more money. So that is platform adjustments. The timing adjustments, basically the same thing, but for times. So again, we can do that. We can hit install. And now if I pick, I mean, it doesn't matter. We'll just pick any of these and hit the timetable button. Now these have become enabled. So again, I could say, oh, actually this train's getting in a bit close to this other one, especially if they were in the same platform. So I could actually say, well, maybe we'll leave a little bit later and, you know, then get, get to the platform at the same time so they can change trains or something. It doesn't matter in this game, but, you know. And you can see that as you adjust it, Obviously, the journey times don't change, so all of these will change every time after the one you modify will change. You can see these changing. And again, it will show you if you're going to lose money by slowing down the schedule too much. So you can adjust the timings. You can even make it stay longer in the station, and sometimes that's useful. By default, it stops somewhere for one minute. But sometimes if you've got a little bit of conflict in train movements, you might say, well, I'll make it you know, two minutes instead. And again, haven't lost any money by making it wait longer. So that's quite cool. It means you can connect to both trains if this was real life. And um, yeah, just leaves a little bit later and gets back home a little bit later. So now that we've unlocked that, we can do that. And those changes are then kind of locked in unless you hit that button to revert it. So if you hit revert, it will reset it back. Otherwise, if you exit, those changes will be saved automatically. So again, we can crack on with that. Um, and then what else have we got in here? The next big one, really, the one that's going to change everything for us is this automatic routing. So when you hit that and you install the upgrade, these are the signals that you will now use everywhere. So when you buy a station, you get these little manual signals for free included in the price of the platform. But the problem with these is they won't set any of the points. If I want to set a route from here down to this station, I have to manually set that to the correct direction and then, <coughs> then click the signal to open the route or right click it to close it. What you can do with the automatic signal, which I can demonstrate quite easily here, um, bearing in mind at the moment, we only we have two sets of points. Um, but effectively, what it means is if I set a signal, uh, sorry, a route from here, let's just pause it a second. If I do a route from here to here, it will set these points in the correct direction. And likewise, if I do a route down to here, 
it sets those points in the other direction. So just by having these signals completely removes the need for me to click on any points. And that's why they're so important. These are the only ones that work with the automation sensors. So all of the automation has to work with the automatic signal. So anywhere where you have points that need setting, you should put a an automatic signal at both ends and it just saves you having to click the points. So that's, I'll need to do one here because if those points are set the wrong way, I need that signal to set them the right way to get into there. And at the moment, that is all the trains that I have are using that route. So, so we can see it here, that's gonna go to platform five. So I can do that, it just does everything automatically. That one's going to platform four, so I can do that. And it's just less clicks. And these automatic signals here, the triangles, they're the basis of everything. So the uh, right, well, all of the sensors, all of these six sensors, only work with this um, with this type of signal. We've fast forwarded a little bit here on the Munich map. I've built out a little more track, although I then realised that unfortunately this station down here doesn't serve any green traffic. So. That was a bit of a waste of money for now because I only have green trains available. Uh, also, we have these auto blocks up here. We haven't talked about them yet, but they're like $24,000 each. So can't really move up there. So we're kind of a little bit stuck with um, what we have configured in here, which is fine for now. All I need to do is get to 10 trains per hour and then it will unlock tier two of green. Uh, and that will give me a little bit more stuff. But anyway, the first thing I want to introduce you to at the moment is the perpetual circuit. So let's just go and buy that. You have to have automatic routing already because they only apply to automatic signals, but we'll upgrade that first of all. And what we need to remember is by default, these automatic signals here, they can set points. So if I go from here to here, it will set that, those points there in the correct direction and it will make the route go green. However, at the moment, all of these routes are self-cancelling. As soon as a train goes onto that, effectively that circuit drops out. And if another train was coming behind it, I would have to manually click that again. Now, in some places that's necessary, like here, because this signal could be going into platform three or platform five. But in some cases, like these signals I've added in here, this signal can only ever go to that signal. So one of the things that we can do is we can build a perpetual circuit and effectively it gets added to an existing auto signal and it doesn't cost very much money. And you see this little infinity sign comes up next to the signal. And all you have to do if you want to lock that circuit in is you can either click this and choose the circuit to lock in and then you see that little sign's gone white uh, the contrast isn't great, unfortunately. There's a few places in this game I think they need to make the contrast brighter. And now what that means is that circuit is set. If a train crosses over it, it will go red while the train is in that section. But once the train's gone out of it, instead of resetting back down to white, it will go back to green again. So it's like a, a permanently locked circuit. Now, you might see the problem with this because let's just get this train out. That's going to platform five. So that's going to be fine for this train going out of here. It's going to work. You'll see what happens when it goes over this section. So this section will reset because there is no perpetual circuit on that. That will then um, go red. And then once it's off the other side, this one here will go green again because of that perpetual circuit. Um, I need to slow this down a bit, otherwise I'm gonna <laughs> go wrong. Now, that's all very well, that looks fine, but you might have spotted the problem, which uh, is not going to be here at the minute. Let's just speed that up, get that one into platform three. This one's then gonna auto reverse and want to go back. Now, what's gonna happen now is if I want to set this, I can't because this has been set in the opposite direction. So you need to remember signals apply to a certain direction. And although you can have, there's actually a signal under here, which you can't see. Um, even though you can have signals pointing in different directions, 
if a root is locked in place like this, it only applies in the direction you've set it. So something I didn't mention before, you can actually queue up roots by clicking clicking on these arrows. So that's kind of saying, yeah, I've got a root, it's ready, it will set, but it will only set when the conflicting roots have been cleared down. Now, in this case, if I do that, then it will clear down this root, which will then allow that one to be enacted, to be set. But you can see there that that perpetual circuit isn't really going to be any use at this location because this is, at the moment anyway, a single track that runs in both directions. Now, although there is one platform here, I could potentially, uh, depending on how much space I have in here, I could potentially branch off somewhere with another track. I could go up here and run alongside. So that might resolve it a little bit. That give me a little bit of a passing loop around here. So I could do that if I wanted to. But basically, these are no good on bi-directional track for the reasons that you've just seen. So where might you use it? Well, although we don't have any trains running on it, this would be a much more reasonable use of it where trains going north to south are going to go down here and then trains going south to north are coming up this way so i'm following the uk practice which is trains go on the left and um, come down on the right so we could use it here and i could place a perpetual circuit on this and on this for the same reason uh, as long as i didn't need any kind of crossovers in here if i did then i wouldn't want this to be locked in, into one place i'd need to use a departure sensor which we'll look at later so that is a good use of a perpetual circuit. That is not a good use. Uh, and so now, just because I'm not going to need it, I'm going to delete that. I need to be careful I've picked up the right thing, which I'm not sure if I did. Did I get Yeah, then I did pick up the right thing. Um, and now that's ready to go and that train's ready. So that's all good. So that is the uh, perpetual circuit. Now, they are quite useful because, as you can see, particularly a map like Munich, which is absolutely massive. Um, if you didn't have any signals in between, say, um, whatever that, I can't read that, Musach station, and let's say it's coming all the way around here and going to, I don't know, Laim, Rangerbahnhof, um, you would need lots of signals in here. Otherwise, you'd only be able to have one train in the entire block at a time. And that would be really wasteful. So what you tend to do in long stretches like this is have signals maybe every eight squares or so. And all of those, as long as there are no crossovers, all of those can have the perpetual circuit on them. And it will just manage those trains for you. So they're definitely useful on long runs. But as you can see on single tracks like this, um, it's not going to work. So perpetual circuits. The next thing to look at is um, the relay sensor. Now, I don't have millions of points, so um, we might need to fast forward a bit as well, but let's talk about a relay sensor. So a relay sensor is the very first piece of automation that you can have. So you can see it's on tier one. As soon as you get to tier two, the departure sensor and arrival sensor are much more useful, but a relay sensor is kind of okay, but only in a small number of places. So how does it work? Well, let's just get this train here out of the way. So it's going to clear down all of those things. That's going to platform four. Let's just make sure that's all good. But we have been given uh, the relay sensor, which is the first most basic of the automation sensors. Uh, and even with this, we can save ourselves a lot of time, although it is a little bit limited. So we need to see how it works. So the way the relay sensor works is you can place it on a piece of track. I don't think you can't place it on a station, but we'll place it on a piece of track here. And then when you exit the build menu after building one, you then have to select it with the left click, normal click, um, point it to a signal and then point it to here. Now, if you now look at this and click on it, it will say it triggers if the train heads towards the selected signal. <clears throat> so let's just speed things up a little bit. The next one, platform three. So we can set this first bit up. Uh, and it's, I've got eight trains now. So it's, um, it's now telling me that um, I've unlocked the red stuff as well. But let's see what happens when this train leaves. So this is going to platform three, which is here. I can actually set that one. Because I've only put one trigger at the moment, it's only going to trigger in one place, but let's just watch it as it hits. It triggers that signal. 
it goes through to here and then obviously the rest of it works just like before and the thing that's quite cool about it is when I go back in the opposite direction as it already mentioned it won't trigger that relay thing on the way back because as it triggers if the train heads towards the selected signal so it's kind of clever enough to know that it only needs to work in one direction like that uh, just keep an eye on these uh, another thing worth mentioning is um, that you can actually queue up routes so if a route in front of a, a signal is occupied it won't set the route immediately otherwise it would crash instead what it does is it puts a little one there and as soon as this train has gone past the next block which will be once it departs the station then that route will automatically set itself afterwards so that can be quite handy rather than me sitting here waiting for this train to get out the way I've now basically got that train cleared all the way through and I might go over here and do something over here. So um, queuing up the routes can be useful, although again, eventually you're going to automate most of this away anyway. Um, so re relay sensor kind of handy, but it's limited. So at the moment I've got one here, but let's just pause it once that train speed it up. Right. Um, we realize that we can't put a relay sensor on a station, so I can't trigger this one automatically. I am triggering this one automatically, but the signal that's under here that you can't see because the route's going over it in the other direction, there's actually a decision to make at this signal. Do I go into platform three or do I go into platform five or eventually maybe any of the platforms, but for now I can get into platform three or five. Now the relay sensor can't handle any logic so a relay sensor would be no use here unless every train that came up this track went into the same platform and then you could do that you could say trigger that signal into that platform so i still have to do this one manually i have to do this one manually that one's automatic i can't put it in the station so none of these are going to be any use with a relay sensor the only other thing i could do is i could put more signals here but again, it's not really going to be much use because I'm still going to have to set most of them manually. So a relay sensor in a lot of places is only really useful in conjunction with the other sensors. Uh, what I have done here is drawn out a piece of track to show you a, a classic example of where you would use one in a real game. And that would be where you have a, a junction like this, effectively a trailing junction where you can only go in one direction from here. You can't turn left and go down here because the corner's too tight. So what you could do is have a relay sensor on that signal. And then when we eventually buy the auto block, you could, you know, put a signal here or put one here and say, yeah, trigger it into that way. Uh, and that would always work because you're only ever going to have trains coming this way towards that signal. And there's no decision. There's no um, path options here. You literally got one, one way to go uh, and only one way. So that would be a classic use of it in the game once you've bought all of the other sensors, just because it's kind of cheap and simple. But most of the other places we have arrival sensors, departure sensors, routing sensors, and then some advanced options as well. So once we unlock those, things will make a bit more sense. So <clears throat> what have we seen so far? We've seen all of these yellow ones. More stations, I don't really need to show you that just yet. I'm not going to waste my points on it just because, like I said before, it unlocks more stations on the map. So uh, up until this point, um, I don't know how many you have by default. Oh, you can only buy four um, by default. If you get that, you can have seven. And then more stations, you can have, I think it says here, 12. And then unlimited stations is all the rest of them. And this is a big map, so you will need that quite soon. So I'm not going to demonstrate that. I'm not going to, not going to waste the money. Um, auto blocks as well. I don't think I'll waste my points on that for now. Needless to say, in order to buy these, that's platform, in order to buy these, which are called auto blocks, you have to unlock that. But you only have to unlock it once and then they're all available. We'll look at those maybe in the next video. Um, and then that leaves us with train alerts and custom contracts. Now, I've nearly got 10 points, so I might as well have both of them. So I'm going to install Train Alerts. Um, and Train Alerts is configurable. Let's just go start playing again. Uh, I can't remember the configuration. Is it here? No, it's one of the... Maybe it's that one. 
So with the alerts, that's the one I've just unlocked, you can get alerts coming up with things like if a train is slowing down, and that obviously um, not if it's stopping at a station, you won't get an alert for that. But let's say a train's going really fast up here and it's getting towards that signal, which is at red and it needs to start slowing down. Then you can optionally have an alert for that. A train stopped at signal, self-explanatory. Um, you can get one for that as well. In fact, if I close that route down, we'll see what it actually looks like. Um, train stop by operator don't usually need to do that but you can do you can stop it and then again you can get a um an alert and also things like arrived trains um you know you, you can get alerts for those you can configure it a little bit but notice here see that little round circle what's important is you will also see it off the side of the screen oh that's going to be really late if i don't pause it You'll also see it off the edge of the screen. So wherever you are on the map, you might you have loads of these. And you do get them sometimes anyway, where if you haven't quite optimized your layout, you might have a train starting to break a little bit before it triggers a sensor to set the signal, and then it speeds up again. It's not going to have any noticeable effect on the timing, um, but still it might come up with a little warning. Obviously, in this case, all I need to do is set that route, and then once I start playing again, that alert goes away. So it's quite useful, um, and I have seen a couple of times, there is a bug sometimes, it usually happens when a certain part of the layout is really busy, and sometimes um, something called a shunting sensor, the sorts of things that you use later on in the game, they start misbehaving and trains start going in the wrong direction, or they don't reverse at a station properly, and then before you know it, especially if you're like me and you end up running sped up all the time, very quickly cause a load of congestion. So those alerts can be a nice way of alerting you to the fact there's a big problem. And usually the first thing I do if that happens is hit the pause button, go over to where the problem is and try and work out what's happened before I, I try and fix it. Um, that does happen fairly often when you make track upgrades. So that can happen. One of the things that can happen, see that perpetual circuit, you might have this set, but if you go into the build menu and build track over that, the per perpetual circuit drops out, but you don't know, you don't notice it. All that happens is it stays green, but when the next train goes over it, it goes back to white. And of course you don't notice until you see the little alert. You go, what's going on? Ah, that's dropped out. And then you have to go and set it back, back again. So there are ways in which um, things can sort of um, get unpicked a little bit, um, which is, yeah, which is fine. Just need to deal with that. So that is train alerts. It is fairly self-explanatory. Um, and then the last one is custom contracts. So this can be useful. I don't use it very often. The most on a map like this, I almost certainly won't need to use it. One of the times it can be helpful is, especially if you've got a big map like this, you might find, yeah, there's no, no real trains sort of coming down here. And I've got this big station, whatever that one is, um, uh, passing. So I might decide that actually I want a custom contract which I can set up maybe to go from, you know, well, down here at Hershing, you know, all the way up here, maybe to the main station and back again. So with the custom contracts, you can do that. And as you get um, further through the game, you will be given more slots for your custom contracts. But the way it works is quite simple. You have to build one of these um, scheduler offices so that gets unlocked when you um, when you add that. Um, you can add it to any station that you've unlocked. So at the moment, um, you know, let's just add one to there just to demonstrate it. And what you do here is you just click on it and you can see by default, I'm allowed to create one. Uh, they call it a blueprint, but um, you could basically say, right, I want a train. It's going to start from Richtung Weilheim. It has to start from the station where that scheduled office is. And then I might say it's going to go to Geltendorf and then, um, and it's a commuter train, for example, and then down to Richtung Mering. And you can choose your platforms and stuff. So you set all of this up. Um, it kind of says continue after fulfilled, but um, that it's not going to start immediately when you do it. It just creates a blueprint. So at the moment, that's not going to work where it is because there's a conflict. See these little orange things? It means there's a, conf a platform conflict. Conflict. So you just need to be careful there. So that's a train that's going from here to here and back again. So I'm probably not going to make my train leave 
um, in between because this train is going to be heading backwards. So what I might be able to do is is effectively do this as soon as that train's left. I need to follow it a minute later. Is it a minute later? Uh, 33, two minutes later. So that might be long enough. Otherwise, I might need to put another signal here just to um, to make that work. And then get on Dolph platform five. Um, and then, yeah, Rick de Merling, again, got conflict. So it might not work. But that's what you do anyway. And you just hit the green button. Uh, and then that is then available to you. And once you've done that, what happens is that little icon comes up just like a normal contract. And this is where you're allowed to then say, I want one of these. So you could kind of go, oh, actually, I've got space now for a, a thing. So you'd choose it. And then this would act just like any other contract. You can, you know, change the departure times. You can tell it whether to continue after you've done the one train and stuff like that. You don't have to. You could just do a one off um, and then, you know, you could then click it again later on. But I think most of the time you're probably going to do it on a regular schedule and, um, yeah, and then that's it really. So custom contracts. The only thing that happens over time is um, not on that. I need to click that. Is over time as you unlock more things, you'll get more slots, and then you get up to six per station. Um, I'm assuming it won't let me build another one of those. Oh, maybe it does. Oh, but it shows the same. Oh no, yeah, it's allowing me to have another one. Um, I don't really want that at the moment, so I just delete that. But. So it looks like you can have multiple ones. Uh, you can also have multiple um, conductor and um, dispatcher offices for your other trains as well if you want to go want to get more offers. But most of the time it's easy just to get, cancel the ones that you don't want with a right click and then just wait for another one to come up. So, yeah, so that's that. So that's fairly self-explanatory. More stations is kind of easy to understand. Um, I'll get that soon. And then auto blocks is another one. Um, the thing that's tricky when you first start a map is you're not going to get any more automation from tier two until you get to 10 trains a minute. But because I have a single platform station here, a single platform station here and two, three platforms here, my options are quite limited to get my 10 trains an hour. So I might have to start either tweaking the timings a little bit or although I could add in another piece of track. I've then got the problem of having to try and sort of manage that and then scroll up here and manage this and manage that. Once the automation sensors, the rest of them are available, then that problem goes away. But for now, um, I'm going to have to look at uh, yeah what I do next. So I'm going to leave it there for now. We'll, you can join me back next time when we look at the tier two stuff. And hopefully I'll have a bit more of the map unlocked, a few more points available and start getting towards a more automated layout. So I will see you then.